Hi everyone, my name is Heather Moore with Heather Moore Photography and I am a St. Louis newborn and family photographer. I have a studio in O'Fallon. I'm actually here right now and I will show you guys around at the end of this video. But I have clients all over the St. Louis metro area and I do a lot of outdoor shooting in Edwardsville, Illinois, which is where I live, as well as Forest Park in St. Louis. So I'm everywhere all the time. So I wanted to get on here today because I know it's just really hard sometimes for people to know how to choose the best photographer for themselves. There's so many to choose from and there's so many good ones to choose from that it can be overwhelming and hard to know who's going to be the right fit for your family. So I wanted to make this video and break it down for you a little bit. And I have decided to focus on three very important things that might help your decision be a little easier. So those three things are safety, style, and service. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. <clears throat> the first one is safety. And that is the most important one because you have a newborn baby or you're going to be having one and you don't want to hand them off to someone who is not going to take very good care of your baby. Not only just in keeping them safe, but also keeping them comfortable. I mean, that's super important. And there are some obvious things as well as some maybe not so obvious things to a non-photographer. So I just want to talk about both of those. First, starting with the obvious, make sure that your photographer washes their hands before they take their baby. I always do before they take your baby. <laughs> I always do. It's just really important. Um, you don't want your baby to be, I mean, even if your person isn't sick, they're touching things and I mean, you don't know what, how, how germs could spread to your baby. So it's just really important to that they're practicing proper hand washing. And I keep sanitizer by my workspace as well, because that's also important. The other thing is, if your photographer is sick, they should not be taking your baby's picture. I know it's tempting because I think everyone knows that babies need to be photographed within a certain time frame to get those perfectly posed newborn photos. Um, since I have a more natural style, I have a little longer window of time, but still I always aim for those first three weeks just while they're tiny and squishy and sleepy. I mean, that's the ideal timing for newborns. But here's the thing. If I were to get sick, I would not photograph your baby because it doesn't matter. Like, it's just not worth it. I would rather put your session off a little bit and not risk coming around your baby. Or in the worst case scenario, I will outsource the shooting part of your session to another photographer I trust and have them come handle that and then I'll still do the editing and everything. And I think you wanna find someone who has similar practices because if someone is sick and I mean, depending on what they have, it could be a week or two before they're better and ready to be around your baby. And so I just, when someone is operating within a couple week window, then it doesn't take, I mean, one sickness can really throw things off. But again, it's just not worth it. And it, just don't give in to that temptation. No matter how much you want those sleepy, squishy baby photos, it's better to be understanding and just wait on your photographer to get better even if that means that you might have they might have to try a little harder to keep your baby asleep but it's just safer for everyone the other thing i want to talk about is safety practices in the newborn session itself so that is something that you probably will just have to ask questions and make sure that your photographer knows what they're doing make sure that they're they they have a lot of experience photographing babies I've worked with hundreds of babies. I've taken more classes than I can count and have been safety trained. And you want someone who is in a similar situation because again, that's your baby. Um, most photographers are posing babies on these bean bags and you wanna make sure that they're not just leaving them there on that surface. Because I mean, I know newborns technically don't roll, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. The same thing, if you, if your photographer is using a lot of props, you want to make sure that the props are always securely placed on the floor and that they are putting proper cushion in there. Sometimes they need to be weighted because if, depending on the pose you're doing in them. I do a lot of prop posing on the baby's back because I feel it's just safer and I like how it looks. But if your photographer is putting your baby like upright into the prop where they're kind of resting their their hand, their head on their hands like this. And like if, like if this was the prop, like if there was a prop right under 
under that. Um, you want to make sure that your baby's not going to tip over because the prop isn't weighted down properly. So these are just things that maybe a newer photographer might not realize that you want to make sure that um, is that they're practicing safe safely. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied here. You just want to make sure that they're handling your baby safely and that they have some experience and have taken at least some safety training classes if they're a newer photographer. Um, concerning safety, another thing is just when it comes to certain poses. Now, I am a very natural photographer. I don't do a lot of poses that are unnatural, I guess, and I don't say that in a negative way because there are a lot of people who do them and there's nothing wrong with those poses themselves as long as they're being done safely. So we've all seen the poses where babies is sitting like up on their hands like this, resting their chin and their wrist. And that, a babies can't do that. Like, I think that goes without saying. So, but here's the thing. You can, and I've seen photographers do it, and I, I don't like it, honestly, but you can kind of tilt baby just so that they actually can hold themselves up like this and stay, like they stay in that position. And then the ph photographer will come back and take the picture with baby just like, standing there like that and I just have all kinds of issues with that because if the baby were to startle forward or fall over I mean there's just so many things that could go wrong so if that's the kind of posing that you like there's nothing wrong with that there is certainly a photographer for you just make sure they are doing it safely what should be happening is what's called a composite shot where a photographer will have someone having the hands on the baby at all times and they will take two photos maybe the first time someone is supporting the baby on this side and then the second picture they're supporting them on this side something along those lines and then they will merge the photos together in photoshop that's the safe way to get that shot so again that's not something i typically do i i have i used to in the past because I don't know, when I was first learning, that was just, I was just doing what the photographer I learned from did. But um, I always did it safely, and you want to make sure your photographer is doing that safely as well. Um, if they're, like I said, if that's someone, if that's the kind of posing that you're after. So that pretty much covers safety. I mean, there's a lot of common sense things you want to keep in mind. And just, just trust your gut, too. Make sure you feel good about the person. And... That is why, I mean, it really is a good idea to get on the phone with your photographer before your session or even before you book. And if you can meet them in person, even better. I know we're all busy. I know there's work and doctor's appointments while you're pregnant that seem to never end. And then there's so much going on. But if you can make it happen, I mean, it's a really good idea. Because again, this is your precious baby and your photographer is one of the few possible strangers that are going to be handling your baby in those first weeks of life. So again, you just want to make sure that you feel good about it and safe. And if you're doing a maternity session, that could be a good time to establish a rapport with your photographer as well, because you're going to be spending like an hour or so with them. And um, you can really develop a comfort level at that time. So the next thing I want to talk about style. I've kind of talked about that a little bit because as I mentioned, my style is really natural and it's not super overly posed. I mean, I do pose babies, but in a very natural way. Like there's, that's one of my babies right there. So as you can see, the baby is swaddled and comfortable. And I just find that um, that's the style I prefer. And my clients choose me because they like that kind of style too. But maybe that's not your style and that's okay too. So let's talk about it. So first of all, you need to think about, do you like color or do you prefer neutral colors? Like, and... I would take that a step further because there's color, but then there's earth tones and there's bright colors and there's pastels. And so does one of those types of color schemes, do one of those types of color schemes feel, um, feel like the right thing for you? One way to know is look at your wardrobe. What kind of colors do you wear? What is, how is your house decorated? Is it very neutral, light, bright, and airy with lots of like whites and grays and some soft beiges or tans or are you like a, a more color the, the better kind of person? Is there bright colors everywhere? Do you have like a bright pink wall somewhere? <laughs> you know, I mean, think about stuff like that. I mean, do you feel incomplete if you're not wearing color when you go out? Um, and maybe if so, you're a color person. So, I mean, and there are photographers who do it both ways. And you just have to decide what 
what is going to be a better fit for you. And not only that, what's going to look good on your walls. So hopefully you're getting these photos done because you want to enjoy them and that some are going to go on the walls and you want to make sure it's going to look good up there. So if your walls are mostly, if your whole house is mostly neutral, then maybe, you know, someone who uses neutrals is the better way to go. Even within the neutral color scheme, there's some variation. There's darker neutrals and then there's lighter neutrals. Um, I personally use a lot of lighter tones. I like, my studio is very bright and white. I use a lot of lighter grays. I'll even work in some soft pinks or blues, but the backdrop to that is usually white. And, or like I said, I'll use a lighter gray or a lighter beigey tan kind of color or a cream. Whereas other neutral lovers might go for the dark grays, like the charcoals or the dark browns and even the sages. So it's just, there's so many styles out there and maybe you don't know and that's okay, but I would just recommend you look at lots of portfolios and decide like what color tones are speaking to you. And then beyond color tone, there's also the style of the session itself. Are you someone who likes the more natural baby poses where they look like they could be from the womb, you know, or they're, they're just all cozy and comfortable like in this wrapped photo there. Babies love being wrapped, so that's why I like to photograph them that way. Does that speak to your heart? Does that speak to, is that how you want to remember your baby? Or do you want something a little more like cutesy? And that's, again, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different style. And so those are things to think about. And if you prefer that, like if you were to come to me and show up on your session day, then with telling, expecting me to do some kind of themed like shot for every single part of the session, I would not be prepared for that because that's not what I do and it's not the kind of things I have. If you want me to put your baby in a in a pot and put a chef hat on, hat on your baby, then I, I'm not the right photographer for you. But there is someone who does that and if you ask them to pose your baby naturally, that would not feel right to them either. So again, it's just something to think about and try to try to decide what you gravitate more towards and if you want to look at a photo and think oh my gosh look how cute that setup is or do you want to look at the photo and think wow like that i mean this photo just screams newborn and everything about the way the baby is curled up and or wrapped it just is something that might remind you of that newborn experience again no right or wrong way it's just um something to think about when you're choosing a photographer so the last thing, I don't want this video to get too terribly long because I, I want you to actually have time to listen to it. The last thing I would consider is service. And what I mean by that is what level of service are you getting from your photographer? So this is another area where to a certain extent, there's not a right or wrong. Obviously your photographer needs to be treating you well and responding to your emails and answering your questions no matter what their business model is, that's a no-brainer. That should be going on. If it's not going on, then maybe you might want to consider someone else. Like, that's really important. Are they getting back to you within a reasonable amount of time? Now, keep in mind, photographers are not, it's not a desk job. It's not a computer job. While there are days that are desk computer days, um, there are days that are shooting days as well. And so I know for me, if I'm at a, if, I, if it's a shooting day or a client meeting day, I might not even sit down and see my emails until that evening or the next day. So just, I mean, do keep in mind that if your photographer isn't responding to you within an hour, that doesn't mean that they're ignoring you or being irresponsible or are bad at service. That means they're just probably doing their job and haven't had time. They're probably giving whoever they're with at the time their full attention, which is how it should be because um, they're giving that person service and then when they're home, they will get to you. So again, you know, I, I would say within a couple days, like if you haven't heard from your photographer within like 48 hours, then maybe it's time to worry. Either they haven't gotten your message or maybe they're not the best at providing customer service. But beyond customer service, what I'm referring to is more the level of service that their business model offers. So what do you want for yourself? Do you want someone to handhold you and really give you a custom experience from the beginning to the end? From the moment you contact them to get information, do you want someone who's going to be asking you questions to find out what it is you're looking for and to make sure they can provide that? And then maybe the next step is a pre-session meeting where you make sure everyone's on the same page. And then after the session, they're sitting down with you and going over product options and making sure that you get the right thing for yourself. I mean, is that 
that is what um, that is one level of that is one type of service you can get from someone and that's more the type of business I have but there's another business model that is not wrong it, it, it might work better for you and that's where everything is pretty much done on email you don't really have in-person meetings or phone calls the photographer is very streamlined and you probably are gonna it's probably gonna be the same type of session from one client to the next there's not a lot of room for customization because they're very it's like a higher volume probably model than the lower volume but highly custom model so you just need to think about what you are going to want out of it um, if you're looking for someone if you're not wanting a lot of customization or someone to hold your hand through the ordering process and making sure you're getting beautiful artwork in your hands and not just handing over a disc and saying see you later then you're probably going to pay a little bit more than for someone who is not doing those things and who does just hand over a disc and kind of leaves the printing and design work up to you and so again that's just something else to consider when you're shopping for a photographer so that's pretty much it videos like getting long now so I'm gonna cut it off but before I go I just want to give you a little tour of my studio so let me turn this thing around oh it's not letting me turn it around so we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way um, so this is my studio. So this is the front room. I'm gonna, can you see it behind me? Um, so we have this bed here. Um, oh my gosh, this is driving me crazy. There's the bed where we can take some photos and it makes for some great, like you can get a good lifestyle feel from it. And then I'm gonna walk into this back room here. You can see we've got a whole lot of like baby things for your baby. And then there's the bean bag where your baby is posed and you can see why it's so important to, that someone is close to your baby at all times like you want to make sure that no one is leaving your baby on that double decker bean bag just for any amount of time so the next thing i'll show you is oh yeah there's the prop area so you can see we've got lots of little blankets and furs and all kinds of things to make sure that you don't have to worry about providing anything yourself and then one of my favorite parts is one of the newest parts. We have a studio wardrobe because I don't want you to have to worry about going shopping if you don't want to. I mean, if you just had a baby, it's really hard to get all that together. And not to mention, you don't know how your clothes are going to fit you. So there's clothes for kiddos as well because, again, if you have other siblings, if, the, if your newborn has siblings, that way you just don't have to worry about it. But then we have all of these clothes, and some of my favorite ones are these more neutral ones um these are really high-end gowns like this one um is from philly boo and this we, there's some free people gowns in here and some beholden gowns that you know anthropology sells those and just really nice stuff because i want to provide you a quality experience so when you come to me that is consistently what you'll get so um that's it for this video um i'm going to be back in a couple weeks with some more topics for you, but I hope that you have found this helpful. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me. My email is in the comments below, in the info below. Um, my website is www.heathermorephotography.com. My last name is Moore, M-O-H-R. And you can also reach out um, by email via the um, email address below. So I hope to hear from you and I hope that I can, that I provided some help with you as you go through this process of choosing your newborn photographer. Have a good, wonderful day.